At Farnborough Airfield near London, Britain displays her newest aircraft in an exhibition which grows yearly in interest, attracting an ever-increasing number of visitors from every country. Fifty-eight aircraft are on show, many for the first time. Detailed information on the performance of some of them is, of course, still on the secret list, but aviation experts acclaim the British machines as the finest aircraft of their types in the world. Naturally, in these uncertain times, designers have given considerable thought to the fighting services. On view was the ground attack version of the Meteor, surrounded by the remarkably large and varied range of weapons which it carries. Claimed to be capable of carrying four 1,000-pound bombs, it's also fitted with rocket boosters. Large crowds saw a magnificent display by renowned pilots flying all types of aircraft, both civil and military, large and small. Among them, Scotland's Pioneer II, a four- to five-seater light transport. Another flighty little four-seater, the Auster Aglet, which you can buy for just over a thousand pounds or three thousand dollars. A remarkable contrast is the 130-ton Brabazon. This enormous machine, with its eight 2,500 horsepower Bristol Centaurus engines, is of course the world's largest land airliner. Here's Britain's biggest air transport, the four-engine Blackburn Universal Freighter, capable of carrying a small bus or other sizable vehicles such as heavy trucks or even bulldozers. Specially designed for anti-submarine work, the experimental short SP-3. Housed in that peculiar shaped nose is the latest detection gear. Looks a bit like a flying elephant, doesn't it? Serving as a feeder liner is a beautifully shaped aircraft, the new de Havilland Heron. Examples of the Vickers Viscount were on display. First, the experimental Tay Viscount, powered by two Rolls Royce Tay turbojets. Then there was the Viscount 700. This 50 seater medium range airliner with a cruising speed of 312 miles an hour is powered by four turbo propeller engines. She's here seen flying with three of them feathered. Originally intended for service on the European route in 1952, owing to heavy holiday traffic during the summer of 1950, the prototype was brought into service on the Paris run nearly two years ahead of schedule. Still supreme, the world-famous long-range jet airliner de Havilland Comet has a cruising speed of 490 miles an hour. It's in production for BOAC and Canadian Pacific Airlines. There was a demonstration of refueling in the air by what is called the probe and drogue system, developed after years of intensive experiment by Sir Alan Cobham. 
A Lincoln bomber acts as a tanker and a meteor takes on the fuel at about 250 gallons a minute. An automatic cutoff prevents loss of fuel when the two aircraft separate. Now the process is repeated. Flight refueling may be one of the most significant modern developments in aviation with far-reaching effects in both civil and military fields. Test pilot Peter Lawrence puts the anti-submarine plane YB-1 through its paces for part of the time with the front prop feather. It has an Armstrong Sidley double member turbo propeller. Largest single-seater striker fighter in production for the Navy is the Westland Wyvern TF-2. Armed with cannons in the wings and carrying a torpedo externally under the fuselage, the Wyvern is the latest example of the recent naval policy of employing single-seater aircraft. A high-altitude research aircraft is the Ashton, built by A.V. Rowe. It has four Rolls-Royce Neen turbojet engines and a speed of over 400 miles an hour. Of great interest was the Avro 707B. This Delta Wing research aircraft, known to the public as the Flying Triangle on account of its shape, is one of several experimental types which may succeed in revealing fresh possibilities in high-speed flight. Coming in to land low and fast, the pilot uses a tail parachute to act as a brake. Wimpy Wade, chief test pilot of Hawkers, flies the P-1081 fighter with its Rolls-Royce Neen turbojet engine. It certainly travels like greased lightning. Vickers 535, flown by Mike Lithgow, an experimental fighter also powered by a Neen turbojet engine, may be even faster than the 1081. Squadron leader Jan Zurakowski, who gave perhaps the most spectacular performance of the show with the Meteor 8, powered by the latest Armstrong Siddeley Sapphire engines, the most powerful yet designed. He climbed to 40,000 feet in the incredible time of about three minutes. Finally, Wing Commander Roland Beaumont, chief test pilot of English Electric, pilots the latest version of the Canberra jet bomber, which is now going into production for the RAF. The first high-altitude light jet bomber, it's powered by two Avon gas turbines and has a remarkable turn of speed and maneuverability. So this year's Farnborough display demonstrates once again that Britain excels in the field of aviation.